Welcome to the third edition of Data with Daniel. Um, I'd like to apologize in advance today because I'm going to be reading a little bit more than I typically will be for this presentation. Um, to begin, I'd like to highlight um, January usage in the DMARC network. We did once again see our highest January ever, um, assisting 20,106 individuals. Um, and as on par with what we've seen in the network, um, historically about 34% of everybody we served were, were minors, um, zero to 17 years old. Thus far in calendar year 2020, we are unfortunately again on pace to set monthly records as well as seeing yearly records um, fall as well. Um, so we'll be talking about that sort of as the year goes along, but just we have seen nothing in the, the early part of the year so far to indicate that we are going to see a plateau in usage um, for the calendar year. Um, today will actually be uh, part one in a, a two-part series in which we're going to be focusing a little bit more on SNAP usage, um, how it's applicable to the food pantry network, um, what the programs are called, and sort of some of the trends we have been seeing. Um, so first of all, there's definitely some confusion um, about the program itself and frankly what it is called. Um, in 2008, what was formerly referred to as the food stamp program at the federal level changed its name. Um, and individual states actually started calling it other things as well. So the federal level called it SNAP, which is Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Um, states started referring to it by a lot of different names. So just as an example, Missouri calls it um, Food Stamp Program. Uh, Wisconsin calls it Food Share. Um, Kansas uh, calls it the Food Assistance Program. Um, and this is not to mention that despite, and, and the, the program itself having different names, the, the card that the benefits are loaded onto also has a lot of different names as well. Um, so this creates some confusion not only for those discussing the program but also for individuals and possible recipients. Um, in the state of Iowa we call it food assistance um, and the, the card that the, the benefits are loaded onto is called the Iowa EBT card or Electronic Benefits Transfer Card. Um, this program, the SNAP program, is a federal nutrition program that is um, designed to allow el uh, eligible individuals to stretch their budget, their food budget, a little further by allowing um, the, the food uh, to be spent at grocery stores, at convenience stores, um, at some farmers markets and even specialty stores and things like that. Um, so some of what we'll be discussing in the second part of this series is how food assistance benefits are being spent. Um, because there are definitely some common misconceptions and, and myths about that we, that we would like to talk about and dispel some of those, those incorrect statements. Um, the eligibility for food assistance program is determined by a number of different criteria, some of which have to do with resource limits, um, such as cost of more than one vehicle, um, retirement type plans, and uh, monetary total of any bank accounts or investment accounts, um, as well as criteria based on family size and dependence. Um, there are quite a few factors determining eligibility and obviously the acceptance into the program overall is a little complex. Um, the most basic qualifier, however, is income level based on household size. Um, the state of Iowa, the income qualifying level is 160% of poverty. Um, though the most recent figures we have are a little bit old, the number of unique individuals in the state that are income qualified for food assistance is roughly 604,000. So this means about 19% of 19.5% of the entire state would be qualified for food assistance if the only determining factor were income level. Um, in Polk County, again, looking strictly at income qualified individuals, <clears throat> the eligibility level would be roughly 20%, um, on par with state level, um, and be roughly 99,000 unique individuals. Um, that means, once again, 20%, one out of five individuals in Polk County would be um, income qualified, which means they, they do not make an income that would put them above that mark for receiving food assistance. Um, in general, at this point, the participation rate for those individuals is roughly 50%. Um, the statewide population average overall uh, is about 50%. The more population dense areas or non-college or university towns tend to have a slightly higher participation rate. Um, while some of the more rural towns and the towns and cities that did count college age students uh, tend to have participation rates as low as 15 to 20 percent. Um, it has been very interesting recently to watch the DMARC food pantry network usage overall um, because in one instance which I will flip to here you can see a very distinct um, usage, yeah, a very distinct trend that we have in usage based on just uh, one month of uh, difference in the SNAP program. Um, so what you're looking at 
on this chart is January 2019, and you can see it actually dipped below January 2018. Um, that was the first time we had seen that in some time where the month was lower than the month previous year. Um, what happened in that case, we were in the middle of a government shutdown. Um, there wasn't much confidence that in February of 2019 we would get the SNAP dollars, the SNAP benefits sent out. Um, so what they did was essentially front load February into January, which allowed some of the individuals we assist to have a little bit more income for that month. Um, and then what you see happen in February is we see this gigantic 20% spike in usage over February 2018 because then at that point those benefits had run out. By February um, they had essentially gone through the dollars that they had been allotted. Um, so you see that we can see this dramatic change in our, in our network usage based on just one month um, of difference in what happened with the SNAP program. That will be very interesting to see the end of February 2020 as well because we're, we're hoping that we don't exceed this sort of art artificially inflated um, February 2019. Uh, the reason we're discussing this as it pertains to the DMARC network is because in the past few years we've been seeing a drop in those receiving food assistance in the food pantry network. Um, as recently as calendar year 2017, roughly 56% of everybody we were assisting was getting food assistance as well, um, which was already down from about 60 to 65% in previous years. Um, calendar year 2019, we saw this number go down to 50.3%, and then January 2020 was the first month we had seen that number go below 50%, sitting at 49.9% of everybody we assisted was also getting food assistance. Um, we also see very distinct demographic trends in who does and does not receive food assistance um, in the network, which are predominantly indicative of the trends that are seen nationwide as well. <clears throat> in the DMARC network, we know that about 42.8% of individuals 55 plus receive food assistance. Um, of individuals that are 55 plus and Hispanic Latino, only 30% receive SNAP benefits, food assistance benefits. Um, single person households in the DMARC network receive food assistance at a lower rate than the, than the households that we see, which is about 44% with single female households coming in at 46%, single male households coming in at 42%. Um, of all military veterans that receive food assistance in our network in 2019, only 36.4% got SNAP dollars, got SNAP benefits. Um, we're always looking closely at this number um, because the food assistance program overall is the, the best, most efficient way of alleviating some degree of food insecurity, um, whether that's in the state of Iowa or nationwide. Um, in December 2019, Polk County allotted $6.7 million for uh, food assistance allotment. Um, compare that to DMARC's annual budget, which is $3.9 million. So there are just simply not enough philanthropic dollars, donated dollars to uh, make up for this program losing significantly more recipients or specifically policy cuts to the program itself. Um, in part two of the video, uh, come in the coming weeks, we'll be discussing more in-depth statistics surrounding the SNAP program, including usage trends, um, SNAP dollars being spent, total benefits per household and how that's broken out, um, and more in-depth data about Polk County and Iowa as well as it sort of reflects on the DMARC Food Pantry Network. Um, we'll also be discussing, as I said, some common misconceptions and myths about um, the food assistance program, um, who gets SNAP, as well as, like I said, dispelling some of the, the common misconceptions. So stay tuned in the coming weeks um, for part two of this series. Thank you very much.